This is KTN News. This Kakamega forest it, it will be there because it has been there. It was there before gazettement, it was gazetted. We know the forest must not be detached. We know uh, nobody should go in the forest and come out in a lorry of logs. Out. Everybody has interest in the forest, interest in seeing the trees standing. Yeah? which is good, we embrace that. The Kakamega Forest is an island of biodiversity. The ecosystem is home to a wide variety of flora and fauna, species that cannot be found anywhere else in the world, spanning 23,000 hectares. The northern part, 4,468 hectares, is a Kakamega National Forest Reserve, a protected area managed by the Kenya Wildlife Service. The rest, the southern side, which stretches even to Vihiga County, is managed by the Kenya Forest Service. Within is the Yala Nature Reserve and the Isicheno Nature Reserve. In 2005, the Kenya Forest Service Act entrenched community participation in its management. It was nothing new. Even before the first physical boundary was established by the colonial government between 1908 to 1910, communities like the Isuha had a deep connection with the forest. Charles Misiko Luanga, a trained surveyor and geospatial manager, was born in Shinyalu town. He has known the forest since he was born. The first thing an Isuha person does is to plant a tree. And there are various types of trees an Isuha person must plant. This problem started when the colonists came. They came and obviously they started demarcating boundaries and resources and so forth. The Isuka person with the trees are one and the same thing. We like a compound that has got so many trees. Now when these fellows came, they wanted to demarcate the forest. But there was a problem because they attempted first time and found they had locked out some people into the forest. About 1929, they also did a second attempt because they found there some homesteads inside the forest. So they did it again and then... When they found that, when, when, when they wanted to remove these people out, they brought a legislation where they wanted these people to go out. There was some resistance at that time. They did a legislation which was not very public to the locals. And uh, the locals only came to know about it when they were coming in to, and found they were actually being arrested. Then these people thought, now what do we do? So then they introduced this thing called Shampa system, where you can go into the forest, uh, they clear a place, you plant trees, and then you can cultivate and take the food stuff at home while the trees are growing. And also give birth to this planting of invasive species into the forest. Otherwise, this was all natural forest. It was too public. I think in 1932, there was a lot of fence. The fence was in Manisha. Waliona vitu ya maana viko ndani. Na vitu ya maana hiyo ilikuwa inasaidia sisi wananchi. Tangu wa babu wetu walikuwa naingia msitu wanachukua kamba ndani. Eh iko miti ingine ya wanachukua ya kwenda kungochea ndizi. quite early in the morning, uh, it started to be precise. We've been going around the forest, just looking around, trying to see what happens on a typical day.
The forest that borders the counties of Nandi and Vihiga can be accessed from three main roads, the Kaimosi Chepsenoi, Kapsabet Chepsenoi, Kakamega Kitale and the Kakamega Kapsabet Road that passes through the forest. As we traverse through the Chiribani area, a pocket of the forest in Munyu sublocation, Shinyalu sub-county, the definition of just a group of trees fades. George Aimo is the Kakamega Forest and Station Manager. From 2013 to date, this forest is managed in blocks with outposts such as Ikua and Chirubaini where we have been. Other hotspots include Shamirodi and Mukoma, even in Vihiga. It's no secret that the Kakamega Forest is a mine of immense wealth, generating revenue in millions a month. But many of the locals are unemployed and poor, Compounded with Kakamega's increasing population, the pressure is on the forest. When you tell somebody don't touch, he'll ask you, give me something to eat. Out of 23,000 hectares, only 1,600 hectares of Kakamega forest is under plantation, which means this is the only area that will require the community to go. The excision, the forest uh, areas that, were, that have been set aside for human settlement Mm, we have Ikuyua having around 53 hectares. These were the people who were resettled there about in 1953 or sometimes back. And then we have people who are resettled when the Mukumu, Mukumu complex was being constructed. Mukumu Mission, they were brought here, uh, those were in the early 80s. That is about uh, 20 hectares. This issue of Kakamega Forest was brought to me by a friend. Uh, three months ago, so he told me, and uh, and when I came, I did not like what I uh, what I saw, because I saw heavy harvesting of uh, trees in Kakamega Forest. I saw indigenous and exotic trees being harvested. I posed as a buyer of uh, of uh, timber, so when I asked these people, they told me that uh, I can get both uh, exotic and indigenous uh, timber. I was informed that if I want uh, indigenous uh, timber, all they could do was put it below the trailer and then they, they load it with the uh, exotic on top. I felt that uh, this was, uh, was not proper because uh, we find that uh, once we interfere with the environment, the environment will punish us. Most of the people are talking about areas because they see some stumps of trees and they, they don't know why, why, why is this going on. Uh, we have uh, trees that are planted uh, in the plantation. So in the plantation areas, this is areas, uh, we call them industrial plantation areas. They are planted for a purpose. They are trees that are planted for protective purposes. This is in the fragile ecosystem. They are trees that are planted to be harvested. These are the areas where you will find the power source and the machineries entering the forests and removing these uh, this materials. That is uh, within the plan, they were stipulated in the plan that we are going to harvest this tree after uh, a given period of time. For example, mm, cypress and pine are harvested at 25 years. If you have seen a cypress plantation, if you walk down the, the, the ground, you'll find nothing grows. Nothing grows because those piney leaves are actually poisonous. A forest has got uh, three levels. We've got the understory, which is like this grass, which is actually where the forest ecosystem starts. Then you've got the mid-story and the upper one. Then you bring in an invasive species. Invasive means it is not, it's not going to play the role that what was there was playing before. That is the problem. It was a mistake, if you asked me, to try and introduce those species inside the forest. A mistake. The sawmiller, the logger in the eyes of the environmentalist, is always seen as the villain in the story. From our understanding, the logging that happens during the day is authorized, though largely unsupervised. We staked out to speak to at least one in charge of the extraction. It was a daunting task. And at night, more difficult. Finally, those we managed to speak to were willing to grant us an interview, but at the time of filming, were away from Kakamega. Those campaigning strongly for zero milling posit that locals do not benefit directly and get very little from the forest. 
it's not very easy to get uh, information as uh, to what is happening uh, in, uh, in Kakamega Forest. And at the same time, uh, there seems to be a cartel which is actually benefiting from this forest. So the locals around uh, do not get uh, maximum benefit from uh, the forest. But when you find that uh, the loggers who come to, to harvest the trees, they are not people from around here. And uh, you find that uh, 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 what happens is like uh, when you cook food in your house and then someone else comes to, to eat the food while you, who, who is supposed to benefit from that food, you are peeping from the window. It is true the people of uh, this place don't own lorries. They don't go into the forest with them. The local person here is so poor. If you have one around, they don't even own a tractor. Yet they are very powerful source in the forest. The decisions made about the forest in this county have a lot to do with Martin Mamati, the government officer in charge of the forest at the county level. Well, by saying benefiting, it is tricky because uh, what we know, they are talking about people who come in, like now the saw milling. You know, saw milling is open. It is an open uh, uh, kind of ticket where uh, advertisements are made and people are allowed to apply to be a saw miller. So uh, nobody is left out. You apply to be pre-qualified and those who are pre-qualified are now given trees to and we have locals there who are among the saw millers. But Kenya, as you know, you understand, we are not uh, limited to, to only people from Isuha or from Kakamega County. The timber that is uh, given to these people, you'll find them even coming here to say this is very expensive, even those from outside. They say we wonder whether we'll make any, any profit from this. What I'm against is actually uh the interference that we've seen since, uh, since uh, the Moi regime, because you, 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 you find that uh, a lot of land was uh, hived off and uh, put under, under Nyai autism. We know that if you give someone a finger, then he'll demand a whole hand. The biggest demand for the community is uh, firewood. They'll want to collect uh, timber or poles for building. They'll want to enter the forest any time they want and collect anything, they'll want to graze the animals anywhere, anytime. But you see, we have controlled grazing. We have to graze animals in areas that are permitted. The biggest threat is charcoal burning and not logging. To, to us, uh, charcoal burning is uh, bad. In fact, it is uh, one of the most dangerous things because somebody fall, fells a tree down, and then uh, sets fire. When it sets fire, it means that all of that, the soil structure is interfered with, the tree is interfered with. Somebody uh, may cut a tree uh, aged uh, 100 years. You see, that's uh, really dangerous because a tree has taken 100 years and then somebody uh, cuts that tree and prepare charcoal. Policing this vast forest land is difficult, but not impossible. The Kakamega Forest Station has 25 rangers. That means that one ranger on average has to manage 600 hectares, a vast expanse. The community also has its scouts, but a stretch to deal with offenders such as pit sowers. Arrests have been made. In just 2015, there were 100, Shamiloli accounting for half of the arrests. Prosecuting remains difficult, especially when the offenders are underage. You see, this, uh, I told you the area is big, and uh, the station requires a four-wheel vehicle, four-wheel drive vehicle, because you see the roads are not very good, and also passing through the forest, uh, moving from here to other areas over 20 kilometers. So, one thing we need a mobile vehicle. Not only mobile, but a four wheel drive vehicle. Kuna mti yenye inaitwa Eritrina Adesini Kamorembe. Hiyo miti ndio ilikuwa kitambo. Ah vijana wale walikuwa na wamevimba hizi mambo. Sasa ilikuwa dawa nyingine hakuna ya kutibu hiyo. Lakini walikuwa naambiwa watafute kuni ndogo ndogo kama kumi. Alafu wanaenda kwa huo mti. Sasa wewe ukimbia tu round ukihesabu kihesabu 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 kihesabu
John's training was refined by the Kakamega Environmental Education Program, KEEP, but he, like many, understands that the forest has changed. In 2014, a number of professionals from the community came together to form the Shinyalu Professional Development and Support Network. The position is that the natural resources management planning around the Kakamega Forest does not look at the wider socio-economic implications. Even with the participation of other community-based organizations like Muleshi and Kip, the ecosystem, they say, has been decimated and contaminated by exotic species. Now, the short-term monetary benefit cannot compare to the environmental value of the forest. Charles Luanga, the chairman, believes that things are getting worse. The findings from satellite images suggesting that as of 2010, there was less than 50% remaining of the Kakamega forest ecosystem. We suspect or we got some uh, evidence. First, personally, with some of my friends, we went and used a technology that can look at the forest the way it was, because the forest boundary is mapped. And then, using that technology, you assess the trees, how they are spread. Then it brings out the picture. This is there's some, there's a problem, because from this technology, we call it GIS. From this technology, you can see there are patches here, these are natural trees, these are artificial, and so forth. So if you assess the percentage, you see it's less than 50%. That is a problem. Whoever talks about the size of the forest shrinking, uh, I don't know, but what I know, the boundaries of the forest have remained almost the same. Somebody says it's being destroyed, let him shout so that uh, people may, may hear the, the noise. But the noise becomes louder. Luanga says it's not just about cutting trees, but the effect that it has on the two major rivers, the Sihu and the Yala, the regular rainfall patterns being experienced. He would rather Kakamega Forest be exploited naturally for the benefits that are not necessarily visible to the naked eye. There's a lot of carbon that is emitted from this forest, and this carbon, uh, it has been measured. There is a CFA that came up with that using, with a, a partner. They partnered on carbon, uh, uh, we call it uh, carbon trade. And so, and so the, the Kenya Forest Service assigned the money area for management and rehabilitation, rehabilitation and management so that they can, be, they can get carbon uh, credits from it, from that, uh, that area. But uh, because of the, um, that kind of uh, carbon trade being sh uh, shrouded in mystery and a lot of um, some issues are not very much known. How many years would it take to clear this forest completely? Um, <clears throat> I tried with my friends to try and project. You may have some trees still standing up, but the density will not be the same. The Shinyalu CBO, partnering with local leaders, came up with a petition and presented it to the Parliamentary Committee on Environment. What they want was clear. The logging to stop, because it's unsupervised, first of all do what we call species count. Species count is a technique we use and we'll have some, like an air review. Then we can, the system will map. Based on the reflective index of each of the trees, we can be able to tell this is species, this is species. Then we can see the entire thing and say, okay, what are we managing? Ours as Kenya Forest Service is that these are areas that have been set aside for uh, production. So we do feel that what was planted for harvesting needs to be harvested because if it is left uh, without, then it will lose material or lose value. The Parliamentary Committee on Environment did respond and was given an aerial view of the forest. When we came down, they said, wow, it, this is a wonderful forest. I was a bit appalled because uh, they gave us a, a fixed-wing aircraft, which any person will uh, agree is not the best for surveillance. They flew over areas, areas, okay, over the trees. The aim was to show us the forest has not been destroyed. Unless you, have, you are properly trained and uh, you know how to tell 
where you are at what time in resp in response in, 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 in relation to where you came from when you are up airborne it will be the same thing the forester cites the growing tree cover and open glades as a clear indicator of regeneration one which from 2006 to date has had tree cover grow up to 10 meters as you know we call it to kwa wingi sana pia kwa maka tulikuwa na hizo croton na carcass hizo watu kienda huko chini ya msitu huko huko pande ya shelero wewe kuta utapata tu zile miti zinaitwa ficus eh expirata hii ni eh imo ni mohuyo azizo tu mzenye wanajua hazina mbao ndio naweza kuzipata tu peke yake lakini zile miti zilikuwa pale hadi huko hiyo msitu yote au wenyeji wenyewe walichoma maka na zikaisha the case of Kakamega is a classic catch-22 situation, a dilemma. What really is best for the forest? An entirely protected area approach or a participatory approach stamped by law? Once we stop the logging, I would propose we do fencing. When you tell us that we leave that area, in short, what you're saying is that the, all of this ecosystem is not going to be accessed by the local community. Because if it's a protected area, why do you need community inside the forest? You are going to raise an outcry. As a manager, what am I going to face? Forest fires. If we said the whole forest is retained as it is, then now we have to do maximum protection. Charles and his team are relentless. Kakamega Forest has been a major attraction for tourism. He believes capitalizing on that and other economic ventures such as Butterfly Conservatory, bird watching tours are a better option. According to the United Nations Environmental Programme, the total area of wild forests with more than 10% cover at the end of the year 2000 was 3.5 billion hectares, 1,700 million hectares in developed countries, and 1,800 million in developing countries like Kenya. Forest resources around the world are increasingly under threat due to conversion of forest lands to other land users and the overexploitation of forests for timber. In a world grappling with climate change, forests are at the front line of oxygen production, carbon sequestering and climate regulation. Kenya seeks to get to the UN recommended 10% forest cover by 2030. 13 years can only make a difference if they are steeped in goodwill and environmentally sound national policies. We should not only talk about destruction, we should also talk about rehabilitation, because that is what is important, restoring it. Yeah, and protecting it. Natural rainforests are not very many. They are disappearing very fast. The view of um, SARS was for the forest or this ecosystem to be res um, restored to what it was before. Because we are looking at the future. After us, our children, they should be able to see it. Generation after generation has been handed down this tropical rainforest. This tree, Mama Muteri is said to have lived to up to 400 years, a witness of the change that has been here. What this forest is now is not what it has always been, but as the years continue to go by, will it still survive? Mama Mutere, also known as the mother of all trees, fell in 2014, bowing out after close to 400 years, a slow and ominous death after its parent tree and mysopsis and mini dried out. Even though it remained upright, it was losing its leaves and bark until its rotten roots could no longer support it. But is this a deeper reflection of the entire ecosystem? The community demands are increasing, needs more immediate. Those calling for the forest to go back completely to what it was are asking for something very difficult, but not impossible. Others want the status quo. What remains constant is that Kakamega rainforest is the only national resource of its kind. Its course, its survival, is hinged entirely on our choices. Dorcas Wangira, KTN News, Kakamega.